Tony Ferguson got the job done. He's now the interim lightweight champion of the world. And I say to Tony Ferguson, well done, my friend. If there's anyone that deserves it, it's Tony, man. Listen, Kevin Lee said this week he's a weirdo. And he does say a lot of weird things. But one thing that you can't deny is his performances in the octagon. You know what I mean? And he's had... Go on. No, I didn't say anything. No, sorry, I said something. Uh, and I think he's had performance of the night or fight of the night in the majority of those fights as well because he's always entertaining every time. And he's on a 10-fight win streak in probably the toughest division in, pardon me, in the UFC. So, um, you know... Well done, Tony Ferguson. Unbelievable. Got the job done. Nice triangle. Kind of a weird finish at the end. Normally, you want to bring the arm over, but he had the arm on the outside. If uh, if you're into jiu-jitsu, you'll know what I mean. If not, just forget I said anything then. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, got the job done. Did a call out of Conor McGregor at the end, which was, I don't know, it wasn't the coolest call out, let's just say that. But still, he certainly got the message. He goes, where you at, fucking McNugget? I'll kick your fucking ass. Final vacate. Uh, I, so I guess that sums it up. Um, now, Dana White said afterwards that Conor McGregor isn't going to fight Nate Diaz. He said, no, the fight that has to happen is the interim champion versus the real champion. So right. um, what do you think, uh, Lewis? Do you think it's going to be Nate Diaz or do you think I, it's going to be Conor McGregor? I think you can't fucking trust a word that Dana White says, and that's not a knock on Dana White. It's just <laughs> he's a fucking promoter, dude. You weren't going to fight GSP. Uh, he was listen, never going to have Tito Ortiz Dana back in the organization. My boss and he's a good guy. But you hit the nail on the head there, buddy. <laughs> I don't trust a word he says. I don't even know if he's even a human being. He could be a fucking robot. Dana White could have died 10 years ago. We have no yeah, idea yeah, what Dana White's talking about. Yeah, that, that's one of the aliens that's controlling GSP. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, I mean, here's the thing. D Diaz is saying he wants $20 million for to fight Conor for the third time, which sounds insane, and it is insane. But realistically, if that was boxing... For an event that size, a fight that big for the pay-per-view numbers, I feel like the boxer would get that money or close to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, oh, I definitely think that. And the truth is, with McGregor going over to boxing and getting that huge payday, I know I know people are going, well, McGregor's not trying to chase the money fights now. Now he knows he wants to just legitimize the... It's like, let's get real. He has opened the window so wide for you know his personal pay and his personal stake and what he's worth that naturally that's also going to open the window and the door for all the other fighters in the UFC. That's the one good thing about that fight. And I think it's why the UFC was almost against it for so long. It, it, yeah. it kind of, it changed the way that fighters are going to be paid, I think, moving forward. And I think that Diaz is right to ask for that much money. I don't think he's going to get that much, but I think he's going to get a fuck ton more than he got for the other two fights. Yeah, absolutely. I think he got two million plus pay per view for uh, the second one. So that you know, I mean, I don't know what his deal is, but that's the, that, that amounts to a lot of money, probably somewhere in the seven eight million range, something like that, or maybe not, maybe a little less than that. But either way, he, he earned a fuck ton of money from that, as you said to use your expression, a little bit vulgar there, Lewis, but still, you said it, not me. Um, but <laughs> twenty million. I mean, I, I think what he's doing there. He's pricing himself out of the market, simple as that. And that's why Dana is pushing um, the Ferguson fight. Okay, I've just worked it out. Here's what's happening. So Dana, by going out there publicly at the press conference and saying um, Ferguson has to fight Connor, that that, 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 that that takes the momentum away from Diaz. You know what I'm saying? So that's going to soften his stance on the 20 million. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. So now, so now Diaz is going to be like, oh, crap. They don't actually want to do that fight. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll lower my, my bid. Maybe I'll only ask for $10 million. Here's the thing. You'll probably get, I don't know, somewhere around 4 or $5 million, I would have thought, plus pay-per-view. Maybe. I don't know. I'm purely speculating. I'm sat here in my underpants speculating. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm not saying that based upon anything. But he's got to get more than the last one because the last one did 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. This one will do huge. Connor is massive. Connor just, you know... After the, the Floyd Mayweather fight, I'm assuming some people from boxing will cross over and buy the pay-per-view as well. So this one could be even bigger than the last two. So, yeah, I mean, the, 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 there's, there's got to be some big paydays. And, you know, for God bless Diaz. He's, and the thing about Diaz, I say God bless him. He's smart enough, he's stubborn enough, and he's stupid enough. Where he's smart enough to ask for the money, he's stubborn enough to hold out for the money. But he's also pig-headed enough to where he'll let that payday slip away. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you the, know what I mean. So I it's also good for him because he's trying to push for that money. Well, I think he looks but at his brother. He's also pig-headed enough to where. I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming maybe Diaz isn't, or maybe he, he he's just using that as a negotiation tactic. But also, I think if he doesn't get what he wants, he'll say, "Well, fuck it, I ain't fighting then." And unfortunately. You know, there is another good fight there, Ferguson versus McGregor. Whilst it doesn't have the history of the uh, the, the Diaz McGregor fight, that's still a solid fight. Still, a lot of people are going to pay to see that. You know, and that is a good backup plan for the UFC, and it it is the legitimate fight, especially in the era where now people are talking shit, even about my fight with GSP and all these interim titles, yada yada yada, as we know about that. It looks like a good PR move for the UFC as well. You know what I'm saying? And let's get real, right? The, it was the combination of the UFC and Conor McGregor that really shined the light that brightly on Nate Diaz. And Nate Diaz is fucking unbelievable. I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest Diaz brother fan in the world. I love those guys. I think they're incredible. I think they're they're just fun to watch fight. They're incredibly talented fighters, but also extremely talented all, uh, on the microphone. Just They're very real, and I love that element of it. But the truth of the matter is... Nate Diaz was pretty hot and cold, especially at uh, you know 170 pounds where he ended up fighting Connor. You know he wasn't like it wasn't like he was setting the world on fire and beating everybody. And it was like holy shit, this unbelievable fighter that's undefeated is fighting this other dude who can't be beat. It was a dude who was exciting and everyone knew that. And because it was Connor and because the UFC kind of said, hey, this is going to be the most exciting fight ever, everyone kind of bought into that. And the UFC knows they also have the ability to sell that same type of fight with Ferguson and the way Ferguson's talking shit you know maybe he's not as you know maybe not as good as you know some other people but he's good dude he gets people excited he's a he's a badass and he has an exciting style and not for nothing I mean I think Ferguson could beat Nate Diaz in a fight I think it's a tougher fight for Conor McGregor on a lot of levels Oh, no, for sure. I mean, the, the, the problem is for uh, Tony Ferguson is that he does get hit. We saw that against Kevin Lee. He had his chin up in the air a few times, and Kevin Lee exposed that. Now, uh, Connor, you know, love him or hate him, dude, the, the guy can fight, man, and he can strike, and he can box. We saw that against Mayweather, and if, if uh, Kevin Lee connected with him sure as hell Connor's going to connect yeah. as well now the problem that Connor has is the same problem that Ke Kevin had you know his gas tank isn't the best you know and that's not me being negative it's just history has shown that um, but uh, and Tony can weather the storm can he weather the storm in the way that Nate Diaz did can, can, can he take those shots well I guess we've got to see them fight to find out you know what I mean but it's certainly an interesting matchup, and you can make a lot of cases for both guys to win. I can see ways that Connor can win. I can see Connor going out there and just completely beating him to the punch and outstriking him, being too fast, and maybe even getting a knockout. And you could also make an argument for Tony weathering the storm, taking him into the later rounds and getting him down to the floor and choking him out, much like Nate Diaz did. Um, you know, so... It's an interesting fight. I mean, just going back to Nate Diaz a second, though. Nate Diaz was never really a 170-pounder. Nate Diaz is a 155-er that had two fights at 170 and, and, and lost them both. He fought Don Young Kim, lost by decision. He fought Rory McDonald at 170 and got absolutely got manhandled. Did you ever see that fight? Yeah, he got suplexed on his head like four times he in the fight. He got suplexed on his head. He got thrown around like a rag doll. He got beat to shit and he went back down to 155. Was that 155, it? he had a great career. He's got some good wins. Marcus Davis, Takanori Gomi, Donald Cerrone, Jim Miller. Lost to Ben Henderson in a title fight. Then he got stopped by Josh Thompson. Came back, beat the piss out of Graham Maynard. Lost the title fight to uh, RDA, Rafael Dos Anjos. Then he beat Michael Johnson. That was a great performance. Then, of course, beat Conor McGregor. And that was the fight that really, you know, put him in the stratosphere of stardom. You know yeah. what I mean? It really was. And if it weren't for that fight, I mean, Nate Diaz will always be a legendary fighter and always be a fantastic fighter with a great skill set and, and a fighter that should be feared for many reasons. But that first fight with Conor McGregor is what made him who he was, yeah, who he agreed. is today, I mean. And then, of course, he lost the rematch. You know, although the rematch was super close, I did give it to Conor. But still, um, the best thing that ever happened to him is Conor. So he should be trying to get that third fight, which I believe he is. And I think... Uh, maybe Dana is just uh, playing a bit of uh, psychology by saying that uh, the DS fight ain't happening. We'll see. Maybe it's just a bargaining tactic. Yeah. I, look, here's the thing. To be honest with you, I kind of want to move on from the DS fight. I think they should just save that fight for a year or two from now. 
Um, and you know, just when, when whatever it is, well, if Connor has a loss, and you know, or you know, that fight's always there. I just kind of want to see a little bit of diversity. I don't want to see the same fights over and over and over again. Rematches are great, but we've seen it twice now. Yeah, but the thing is as well also, I know Dana wants Connor to fight on December 30th, you know, at the year-end show, and I don't know if that's uh, th 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 that's going to be possible. I know they're pushing for that, but you, if you look at Connor, the, I mean, listen, Jesus Christ, you know, in between camps this year when I had my surgery and whatnot, I wasn't in the gym all the time. At least Connor was in the gym training and, right. and, and working on his boxing, you know, his striking. Um, he's got good grappling, got decent wrestling, decent technique.